Filipino giving me suits, gay. Bronx Capo. So in 1996, Diana Ross, during her halftime show performance, and they go a 13, 9 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1, that's a 13 for the 7 day theory. Thank you for tapping in this live premiere. I want to talk about Diana Ross leaving in the helicopter, Super Bowl 1996, Super Bowl 30. And if Pac did leave out in a helicopter asking questions, did the big homie get the idea from Diana Ross? The fact that Diana Ross switched out in her outfit, as you can see, she has on an outfit. She even switches outfits. Now, here comes the helicopter. This shit crazy. In 1996, Diana Ross. It was Dallas versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, Diana Ross, she's about to head out in a helicopter. Check this shit out. If you just tap in and dip hot, get the idea from this. How about the helicopter girl? There's a helicopter girl, right? <laughs> There's her who claimed. We were kind of pretty far down the street um, when it happened. We didn't know if we heard gunshots or we didn't really know exactly what we heard. We heard a lot of screaming, um, a lot of cars screeching. Um, we were just hanging out, taking taking photos at the time. We ran up the street as cops were running past us. And uh, by the time we got here, they were already taking, um, which now I found out was Tupac, into the uh, helicopter away. He had been shot. It's her who claimed that Tupac was yeah. airlifted out of there, uh -huh. but that wasn't true either. She must have been on one. Yeah, there, there, there's <laughs> a lot. There's a lot going on. In the beginning, like right after the shooting, didn't he say it was like Keefy D's nephew and he threw Keefy's name into the mix? That's what Keefy said in our in our interview. He basically accused Suge of snitching in a way. Billion dollar. You know, you're talking about a, a defense team that will be very difficult to overcome that would uh, be representing Puffy. Right. Well, I, I do know, based on my interviews with TK, was that around that time, I'm not exactly sure if the timeline is perfect, but around that time, Eric Von Zip bought a nightclub. Puffy allegedly sent him a million dollars. They sent it to Eric Von Zip, mm -hmm. And the story was that Eric Von Zip kept the money. Right. I'd heard he bought a nightclub. Right. He did. He did buy yeah, a nightclub. He did. <laughs> <laughs> So that part's true. Yeah, yeah, because zip code. Zip code. It's <laughs> <laughs> called zip code. Yep. Where was it? Um, in Harlem. In Harlem. <laughs> Puffy's hometown. Yeah, he had Harlem. He had, well, well, not um, Puffy's dad's hometown. Yeah, he had a place up in the Bronx, like another club in the Bronx. So kind of you're coincidental. Kind of, coincidentally. <laughs> you know, yeah. and when you look at the price of launching a nightclub, half a million will probably get you there. So... It's hard to say, you know, I've heard rumors that there are, you know, some sort of paper trail when it comes to deposits from Diddy or something. I don't know whether it's true or not. I've never heard this um, with Eric Von Zip being dead. I don't think whether you could really prove this on any level. Yeah, I don't think so. Right, because you and I have talked about this before and I, I get this question a lot is, you know, do you think that Diddy could somehow be dragged into this case criminally? I've always said no. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I don't see how it could happen. Not based on the testimony of just Keefe D. Right, because he's going to try to say it, but th does his words really hold any weight at this time? Not when you look at the monumental task of trying to prosecute a music icon, a multi-million, you know, close to a billion dollar you know, you're talking about a, a defense team that will be very difficult to overcome that would uh, be representing Puffy. And your only person on the stand is Keefy D. 
He's just <laughs> that's your star witness. That's basically. your star witness. Yeah. Right. Good luck with that. Well, leading up to what happened this year with Keefe's arrest, you've always said that Suge Knight's the reason why Keefe or Orlando or anyone else in that car never got arrested. Yeah, I think that if anybody personally had a, a, a personal responsibility to solve that case, yeah, I would say that I hold Suge Knight responsible because he could have, you know, I, I understand why he didn't. I don't agree with it, obviously. But um, yeah, if, if, if he really cared about Tupac's case being solved and bringing people to justice, he ought to have cooperated from the beginning because it would have made all the difference in the world. Well, didn't he say something in the beginning, like right after the shooting, didn't he say it was like Keefe D's nephew and he threw Keefe's name into the mix? That's what Keefe said in our, in our interview. He basically accused Suge of snitching in a way. Well, Suge most certainly put it out amongst his own inner circle of people. But wasn't there, there was like a newspaper article or something like that where, or on MTV News or something where Keefe's name was thrown in there? Yeah, I remember the actual source information of people that were there when Suge Knight, he doesn't say Keefe, um, at least in these documents, he said it was the Southside Crips. So he points the finger at the Southside Crips. Of course, the war starts the next day. And if Keefe D's claim of seeing, if, if, if him and Suge had eye contact at the time of the shooting, then of course, you know, Suge would have known it's not just Keefe D, but there's other people that were in the car that hear his associates, thus the Southside Crips. So. Well, uh, Gaddafi, who was very close to Tupac, which, who was in the car right behind Tupac when the shooting happened, he saw the actual incident and he met with Las Vegas PD mm -hmm. and cooperated on a certain level. He said, yeah. it's a white Cadillac, guy was the driver was wearing a hat he was mm -hmm. dark skin he had a mustache well they say what he looked like he said he looked like a bitch he said he, yeah he he had a bitch face okay. uh, but uh, in, in that same conversation he doesn't associate that individual with the shooter yeah so that's just you know yeah, that's just the driver yeah so the arm that comes out of the car um is just really you know described as probably a a male black's arm it comes out of the car. Um, it's it was you know in more recent years they're saying it was a big arm and you no know, that was none of the original information. Well, I, I know someone that was in that car who said it was a big meaty arm basically. Hmm. And Orlando doesn't have was skinny. So you somebody that was in yes uh, the Cadillac. No, someone that was in the car behind Tupac's car. Okay. Well, the only ones I remember specifically reading their statements at the time was Malcolm Greenridge. Oh, Green, Green, am I saying that right? Uh, Edie, I mean. Yeah, and then uh, in Yafufula. And neither of them at the time, they're describing right. the incident. Yeah, but I, I know people that talked and, and everything okay. else like that and so forth. Frank Alexander obviously Frank didn't describe it one. as a big arm. He did as well. Not in his original statements. That's but, the well, important part. Later on part. he said that? Yeah. So this is this whole thing about how memory and perception changes in time. And, but for us, the best information is typically the closest to the event. Mm -hmm. So when these things happen and people are giving you their descriptions, typically the best descriptions are the ones that are within a short period of time after it takes place. Right. And um, Gaddafi ends up dying a few months later in just a, a freak accident, essentially, uh, back in New Jersey. Yeah. Once again, totally unrelated to yeah. the Tupac murder at all. And I, I've talked to people around that situation and sure. so forth. Okay, so then let's go to 2023. July 17th, Keefe's wife's house in Henderson, Nevada, gets raided by Las Vegas PD. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised this happened? Not surprised because I knew that there was already a reinvigorated investigation and that they were moving towards that goal. I was surprised the day it happened because I was unaware of the timing. Uh, but I'm not surprised that it happened because that seemed to be 
you know, it's all part of that investigative process of uh, pre-indictment, grand jury, all of these things that were taking place. So were you involved with Las Vegas PD leading up to this? Involved in the extent that I was helping to provide some information from our case, just trying to bring them up to speed on anything that had taken place. Um, you know, I'm involved, Darren Dupree's involved. I think Mike Dorsey is leading this charge to try to get people to put pressure on Las Vegas. So there was a collective effort um, for everybody to try to work together. But I wasn't involved as far as doing any investigative work. I mean, when you look at a case this big and this old, how much money does a police department have to put aside for something like this? Is this millions of dollars, essentially? It really depends on what extent they investigated Kefi. If they were doing wiretaps and that type of thing, that starts getting really expensive. Um, but if they were just doing your kind of more conventional police work, then no, you're just, it's your investigators that are getting paid anyways, regardless yeah, of what case they're direct them over here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they raid his house on July 17th. They find bullets in his house, but no surprise to anyone, the bullets don't right. coincide with anything. Didn't they find some Tupac related stuff in the house or? I don't know exactly, uh, other than obviously his book was there and some other, I think they took a bunch of photographs. Don't know what those photographs um, consisted of. I don't know of any memorabilia that had to do with Tupac. I do know at the time that he, the car that he was driving back in 1996, which was that black SS Impala, that had a Tupac CD in the trunk. When they, okay. <laughs> when they, you know, so here they've just got done shooting Tupac and now they've got his music in the car still the day that they impound his vehicle. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's that's kind of dark. July 17th, the house gets raided. Three and a half months later, September 29th, Keefe gets arrested in Las Vegas. Right. Between that time is when the grand jury is happening. Are you involved in the grand jury? No, not directly. Okay. I know some people that were involved in the grand yeah. jury. They actually were calling me. They called me like a dozen times. Uh, I just ignored their phone calls. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, they had to start leaving voicemails. And they basically said they wanted all my raw footage hmm. for the interviews, but I just chose not to cooperate. From my point of view, my goal was not to put Keefe in prison. It was to get the real story out. And also, if someone sits down and interviews with me, I'm not going to turn around and then use that interview to try to put them in jail, regardless of whether I agree with them or don't agree with them. Mm -hmm. That's just my own rules that I abide by. You know what I'm saying? So, and on top of that, there was really no raw footage to be had. If you know my interviews, we essentially put out everything, unless the person coughs or has to go to the bathroom or whatever yeah. else. Like, we don't, we're not cutting out, you know, important parts. It was all there. And, you know, before, in between that time, between the raid and the arrest, Keefe reaches out to me and wants to do a third interview. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but this time he wants to deposit because I paid him for the other two interviews. Okay. But this time he wants to deposit. And I'm like, okay, I know where this is going. I'm going to give him a deposit and he's going to get arrested. And I'll never see the money again, but whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I I'm aware that this is probably the outcome of this deposit. And sure enough, we give him a deposit. He disappears. You probably learned that from Shug. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And I know that he hit up some other outlets and did the same thing. So it seemed like he was trying to basically stack whatever money he could. Once again, I don't know why he didn't leave. I would have left. Mm. Have you ever seen anyone successfully leave the country when they have an arrest pending and then just disappear forever? Never to be seen again. Um, not really, not off the top of my head. I mean, people can be at large for a long period of time, like, like a Whitey Bulger. Right. Yeah. Um, so people can be at large for a long period of time, but ultimately it seems like at some point they get caught up. Okay. But you can go to another country. Yeah. That doesn't well, have an extradition policy, but then you're just in another country trying to right. figure out what to do with yourself. 
Right. Me personally, I'll be in the other country. I'll be in Iran or Well, you probably Russia. have <laughs> you probably have the financial resources to live elsewhere. Yeah. You know, what is Kifi D doesn't have anything um to support himself. It's better than prison though. Yeah, yeah, I'm not disagreeing. I'm uh, just saying I'll take that, I'll take no Ria. You know, if I gotta work in a Venezuelan restaurant for the rest of my life, it's better than prison. Yeah. Again, I don't know that he had completely been convinced that it was going to culminate in his arrest. I think he thought probably Vegas was still on a fishing expedition. He probably thought that he, his public statements weren't going to be used against him. So I think that naivete is what kept him, um, kept him around. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the footage of him getting arrested, the body cam footage, mm -hmm. it was like the cop, I guess, didn't even know what he was being arrested for. Hmm. He was just sent out to arrest him. Right. And he goes, what are you being arrested for? He goes, oh, the biggest uh, case in Las Vegas history. Yeah, well, I think the cop was just plain like he didn't know because there's no way you're going to send cops out to arrest a murder suspect without telling them this is what we're sending you out ah, to Ah, okay. So he was just kind of playing with Just the playing, thing. yeah. Just playing dumb to see what, you know, what kind of statements Keefe D might say. Prior to the arrest, the grand jury comes back where they finally indict Keefe. Now, I got to learn how grand juries operate during this process. I was talking to a, a lawyer friend of mine, and he had quoted um, Johnny Cochran saying that he can convict a turkey sandwich with a grand jury. <laughs> He's a ham sandwich. But yeah. A ham sandwich, right, with a grand jury, <laughs> meaning that you have a situation, the grand jury could go on for months, right? Mm -hmm. It can go on forever. They can keep bringing more and more evidence to the same grand jury, this group of people, who have to keep listening to this evidence. There is no lawyer to counter this on any level. Mm -hmm. And they could just keep throwing stuff at the grand jury until they get the answer they want. Is that pretty accurate? Not really. I mean, there is, it's, you can't just keep this thing open-ended indefinitely until you're convinced you're going to get the, you know, you're going to, that you're going to get the, um, the result that you're looking for. The process is a little bit more refined than that. But you're right, there's no defense, but all you're trying to establish is probable cause, which is a very, very low threshold. It's just probable cause. You're not trying to get enough information, you know, you're not trying to prosecute anybody. You're just seeing if there's enough probable cause to demonstrate that it is prosecutable. Yeah, but once you're under that probable cause umbrella, you have a world of problems. Mm -hmm. that you're dealing with. You now have to get a lawyer and you're now facing serious charges and everything else like that. It just bothers me that during this process, there's nobody there on the defense side to say this, although this looks like this has something to do with it, this really has nothing to do with it. And let me explain to you why. Mm -hmm. That's not there during that process. Yeah, well, that's what trial's for. Right, but I'm saying is, I mean, how often do grand juries choose not to say there's pro enough probable cause? It seems like if you have the ability to keep coming back over and over again, you'll eventually get what you want, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it does seem like it's a little bit one-sided one -sided or lopsided. Yeah. Uh, maybe from your perspective, it's it's unfair. Yeah. Um, I agree with the process because I understand how this has to work, that you build, you're building up from nothing. And it starts out with probable cause. Like every arrest that is made is based on a probable cause arrest. And then you gather whatever you have and take it and see whether it's a a, a prosecutable arrest mm. and then if so then a filing's made and somebody's charged officially so it's just part of the process um but i i understand where you're coming from you know it just um, seems a little unfair yeah like i said like based on that process you and i could probably get grand jury indictments against us I don't think I could. <laughs> Not based on the things I've done in my life. I don't think I've committed crimes. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying in general, though. When you keep providing things, and there's no defense on the other side, there is a bit. You have to provide enough, enough compelling evidence to indicate that this person committed a crime. Okay, fair enough. Well, part of the grand jury was this guy named Dirt Rock. Mm -hmm. You know who that is. Mm -hmm. Describe to me what Dirt Rock's role is in this whole situation. Well, obviously he's a grand jury witness and he says that he was there when comments were made by Big Dre, DeAndre Smith, 
and that he has, I know that Dirt Rock and Keefe D have a very long history together. Dirt Rock was a Southside Crip. Um, so he's going to be one of the, I think, testimonial witnesses that will lay the foundation of Keefe D's direct involvement in a gang to establish the gang enhancement. Okay, but Dirt Rock said that Orlando was not the shooter, mm -hmm. that it was Big Dre. Mm -hmm. And the way he broke it down, I, I read through this, and basically it said that Dre was the shooter, but according to gang rules, Orlando should have been the shooter because he's the one who got jumped. Sure. So by allowing Orlando to take the credit for this, it makes Orlando look better and it also takes the heat off him as being the shooter for one of the most loved artists in the world. So he was basically okay with this whole situation. The guy that's supposed to have done it is getting the credit and he could brag about it. The heat is off of me and the whole, you know, all the Tupac fans in the world don't want to kill me. I'm okay with this. It sounds plausible. Sure, but there's some loose ends to it also. Keeping in mind that there's other people who could say they could call call bullshit Andre. You know, Terrence Brown knows who shot and he's around during this period of time. And so he could easily counter that and say, no, bullshit, man, Orlando had the gun. He's the one who shot. So, but, and, and, but T. Brown but, doesn't make any statements though, so. No, well, he does because there's he's down there bragging that he shot Tupac. So everybody in the car is, with the exception of- Wait, wait, wait. So T. Brown, Terrence Brown also claimed he was the shooter? Yeah. Oh. Everybody in the car was taking credit for it. But not Keefe. Not Keefe. Yeah. But all the other he's guys. He's the older one in that crew. So right. He's, he knows a little better. Right. And he's trying to tell everyone to shut up because, you know, it's getting around that everybody's bragging about So it. Orlando, DeAndre, Andre, and Terrence are all saying they're the shooters. Right. All three of them simultaneously. Like they all <laughs> held the gun together and just, okay, got <laughs> they it. They all want to take credit for it because. It's kumbaya moment. Yeah. yeah. Right. For them, it is. It's, uh, you know, it's, um. You know, you get, you're, you're building your status. Terrence Brown was already known as a shooter. Like, so it would have made sense, you know, he would certainly do it at the drop of a dime. DeAndre Smith also had been looked at for a couple of shootings. And of course, Orlando Anderson's Orlando Anderson. So um, all things considered, I think it's Orlando. It makes the most sense to me. It's most definitely who Keefe D said had done it. He could have said it was DeAndre and not thrown his own nephew under the bus. So to me, it makes the most sense it was Orlando. Um, but everybody was taking credit for it. Well, why do you think Dirt Rock is saying that it was Andre? Well, because DeAndre may have said the same thing that Terrence was saying and, you know, bragging about it. Oh, so this is just because yeah, Dirt Rock wasn't there. No. Oh, no, no. Dirt Rock wasn't even in Vegas. Right. And Dirt Rock had his own drug case that he was dealing with, right? I think he's had more than one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I spoke to Dirt Rock. Yeah. He's considering whether or not he wants to okay. say something or not, but okay. we had a conversation about it, and, you know, he's part of the grand jury, so at this point, you know, the cat's out the back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I actually spoke to Dirt Rock before our interview and the Keefe interview, and it was... Back then, it was like it wasn't enough information. It's arrested, Suge Knight said that Orlando wasn't the shooter. He also said, free Keefe D. Because <laughs> he's got a podcast now yeah. from prison. When you heard that, what'd you think? About him having a podcast? Well, about him saying Orlando wasn't the shooter. Oh, nothing that ever comes out of Suge Knight's mouth. You, it just it just dissipates into the, you know, the stratosphere. Not throwing his own nephew under the bus. So... To me, it makes the most sense it was Orlando. Um, 